So I figured instead of responding to this forum post, I might as well, you know, make a recording essentially documenting how I perform uh, this sort of workflow outlined here, which essentially allows you to assign a sort of regional class uh, classification to cells in an image that have been segmented with Stardust or even the conventional watershed segmentation. Um, there are a couple of different ways you can essentially incorporate a pixel classifier's classification with that of um, cell segmentations, but also cells that have been classified using an object classifier or a composite classifier. It's essentially taking classifications that fundamentally operate on two different higher uh, levels of this kind of image object hierarchy and allowing you to essentially integrate them into kind of a seamless method without issues pertaining to, you know, edge artifacts of having to resegment cells in, um, you know, different annotated areas separately. So anyways, uh, the forum post essentially started off with a bug. And right off the bat, this not a number tells me it's some issue relating to a complex annotation topology generated from a pixel classifier. In this case, um, the pixel classifier is run first, but then start as the cell segmentation is actually run second. So what I essentially found in my own kind of work is that it's better to actually uh, generate your cells first and then deal with any kind of annotation, modifications, generations, whether it be from pixel classifiers, uh, single measurement thresholders, anything like that. So anyways, let's uh, get started. So I don't have a uh, codex multiplex site C image on hand, but I do have an imaging mass cytometry image on hand, which should be fundamentally similar for the sake of this uh, demonstration. Now, the first thing you want to do, uh, well, before I start this, let me preface that I do have a composite classifier already prepared, and I also have a trained pixel classifier model also prepared. So what I'm essentially going to show is on this image with no objects currently present, how do you go about essentially integrating a pixel classifier output with a cell segmentation. So let's uh, get started. First thing we want to do is define the area that we want to look for cells, I independent of any tumor epithelium structures, just anywhere we want to identify and segment cells. Um, now in the case of IMC data, you can simply create a full slide image annotation, um, control shift A. Oops, control shift A. Um, if you have a lot of empty space, like in a lot of images made by Acquire Biosciences, uh, platforms like Codex, now rebranded as Venocycler, or Opal Vectra, you might have a lot of empty space because it'll perform full slide imaging. Uh, so you can, you know, modify your annotation just to include tissue. Can be done manually, but for the sake of this demonstration, let's just pretend we have a whole slide image annotation. <clears throat> First thing we want to do is run cell segmentation. Uh, <clears throat> more specifically, um, start a cell segmentation, just to keep it consistent with what was outlined here. So, let us run Stardust. Mm. So this is kind of like the default starter script I have on hand. Um, <clears throat> the iridium intercalating agent is our counter stain and it's on channel 35. Um, so yeah, we should be good to just run it and generate our cells. <clears throat> Great, so we have our cells. Uh, Parameters might need to be a little fine-tuned, but again, this is just a quick demonstration to show how you could integrate all of this stuff. Now that we have our cells, we can load our composite classifier, which basically consists of a bunch of single measurement classifiers all uh, created independently. Um, so now every single cell in this image has been assigned one or more uh, classifications. 
and those are applied sequentially and labeled as, uh, I believe, both the name and class variables. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of different cell types in this particular image. It's mainly just a bunch of histone positive cells, but um, you know, a cell in this case can be positive for more than one different markers. This one's pancytokeratin positive. So we've created our cells. Now, how do we incorporate a pixel classifier? So what I like to do is keep things simple and let's just get rid of any annotations that we don't long don't uh, that we no longer need. So this kind of parent annotation across the whole image, we can just delete that. But we want to keep our descendant objects because those are our cells of interest. Next, we can load our pixel classifier. Um, now, there are a couple ways you can go about um, assigning classifications to cells from a pixel classifier. The simplest being classify. If uh, it'll basically assign a class to every single cell and effectively populate this class variable by what um, what is the centroid or well, if the centroid of the cell falls within one of these different pixel classifier regions. So that's the simplest thing that can be done. You can export the data right off the bat. Uh, you wouldn't even need to have deleted the original parent whole image annotation. I'm going to show a slightly different approach where I actually generate annotations. Um, the reason I like generating annotations is because it's just a lot more easier to work with annotation level exports. Personally, when I'm analyzing multiplex IC data, rather than have to do a bunch of filtering, grouping, uh, and other methods of slicing a uh, data frame in Python when I'm dealing with the per cell statistics outputs. So what I'm going to do instead of click classify, which will also give you effectively the same results is create objects. Now choose parent objects. In this case, we want a beautiful image. Object type will be annotation. Uh, split objects, we can leave it unchecked. Delete existing objects. We want to keep it unchecked because we want to preserve our cells. And, you know, again, you can tune the minimum object size, minimum whole size. Um, but yeah, let's uh, go ahead and create this. Now, if I close the pixel classifier, we can see that annotations now exist. However, if we click on the cell, we can see that the class variable doesn't actually represent uh, the parent annotation yet. How do we effectively, you know, tell that this cell lies underneath a um, interstitium annotation? Uh, yeah, or sorry, tubule annotation. Um, well, we can go objects, annotations, uh, resolve hierarchy. And, you know, I see this warning that says it might take a long time, but personally, I've never had to take more than a fraction of a second. Um, so now, yeah, we can see the parent. Sorry, I, I said class. I meant uh, parent is now tubules. So we'll click on this cell, the parent is interstitium. One thing to note is that if you were to have generated the annotations and then run start a cell segmentation, what effectively happens is each uh, individual annotation gets passed to Stardust sequentially, or seemingly sequentially, and runs cell segmentation inside of this with effectively it being blinded to cells, um, to pixels outside, immediately outside this annotations, at least from my understanding. I might be wrong. Pete could probably elaborate more on this. But what ends up happening is for a cell like this, it might be counted twice. You'll have it uh, being detected once while it's processing the interstitium annotation, and then another time when it's being processed through the um, tubule, I think, annotation. So this method kind of resolves 
the finicky nature of um, edge artifacts when it comes to cell segmentation, if you're processing cells, or if you're segmenting cells on the edge of an annotation. Now you still will technically have it if you create a whole image or whole tissue annotation. You'll have some artifacts on the border, but when you're working with a whole slide image, like something generated from Codex or Phenocycler or um, Opal Vector, the perimeter to area ratio is fairly small. I mean, we have a massive piece of tissue and the number of cells that lie on the edge relative to the total number of cells is fairly small. Um, anyways, in the interest of keeping this uh, demonstration short, I believe this should kind of have uh, outlined this workflow that I proposed here. So yeah, you can see a parent of that cell right here is tubules. Um, and, you know, I basically show we create a full image annotation, run Stardust, uh, delete annotation childs, uh, run the pixel class for the whole image, um, and then we resolve the hierarchy such that, uh, <laughs> my bad, I keep on saying class, but in reality it's actually parent. The class variable will have a list of markers that your cells are positive for, and the parent is what parent annotation it falls under. Um, just want to see if there are any other comments. Um, so yeah, Pete, absolutely correct. The uh, classify button would already be enough. Really depends on what kind of downstream uh, data visualization you might be doing in Python but this is one reason I prefer to keep it as annotations. The other reason I like to keep it as annotations is spatial analysis, distance to annotations. So now for every single uh, cell, we've got a couple of other features such as the distance to these different structures. Might be of interest, I don't know. <laughs> um, but hey, you know, it's free data, you never know when you might need it. Um, generating annotations also gives you the option to just manually tweak these annotations if, you know, it's feasible. I mean, if you're working with one image, sure, if you're working with a thousand images, it might not be feasible to go in and manually correct each of the thousand images. Um, but yeah, judging that you're working with Akoya images, uh, I doubt you're going to be processing, you know, tens of thousands of them, unless you're a billionaire. <laughs> Um, anyways, yeah, uh, thanks for your reply. I do not understand what you mean by resolve the hierarchy in step five. So hopefully this video answers that question. Um, perfect. So on that note, I will conclude the recording. And if, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, feel free to let me know in the forum. Thanks.